Francisco 49ers taking on Ryan Fitzpatrick and the Miami Dolphins. Well, the onset of fall weather certainly a welcome occurrence for folks in Silicon Valley, and we've got football on a gorgeous day here in Santa Clara as we are situated at Levi's Stadium. The scene a short time ago, this crowd, they love their 49ers, and they were in full roar as their guys burst out of the locker room, and we're ready for football as the 49ers get set to do battle with the Miami Dolphins. Again, everyone, Brandon Gordon alongside Charles Davis. And Charles, you take a look at these 49ers as they interplay here. The losers their last time out, so they'll look to make amends here. And one of the best ways you can. Seems like we were just starting training camp, but here we are in October, and off we go on EA Sports. Taking it about the one. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. The Dolphins take over. The Dolphins offense set to take over, and it's the longtime veteran, Ryan Fitzpatrick, who leads the way. And the numbers were not pretty. I mean, they don't look right. When you throw two interceptions, no touchdown passes, there's no way to really make that work. But I thought there were a lot of positives in watching his game tape. I think he's close to putting out a good performance. Let's see if he can flip those numbers around in this game. And, of course, rally his team to a win. A first down throw for Fitzpatrick. Brought in over the middle by Grant. Four yards the result on the first play from Scrimmage. Second down. So a look here at the key inactives, and we got this list before the game down on the field. And they tell us the same thing every time, don't they? Next man up. No excuses. Be ready to play. That's the mantra of every organization. The key is having guys on the roster who are capable of filling in and playing at a high level. That's when you know you've drafted well, scouted free agents well, and stocked your team just the way you're supposed to. And the Dolphin first down. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Here's the first carry from Matt Breda. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. Breda on the carry. 38-yard line, second and nine. One yard gain. Brings up second and nine. From the gun, Fitzpatrick. That'll be complete to Breda. Fitzpatrick's pass. Complete to Matt Breda. It's a gain of seven. And this is Fitzpatrick on third and two. No, oh, they would have gotten the conversion if he could hold on. Instead, the drop means it'll be fourth down. So the defense able to get off the field here on third down. And it's one of the goals of the game. They've got to be effective on passing downs. It's one of the few things defense has chart. How did we do on third down? That's a nice start for them in this one. Now comes the San Francisco offense as they are led out by their quarterback, the man known as Jimmy G. That's Jimmy Garoppolo. So this is what we find out about the game plan and the trust factor, don't we? In this situation, the natural thing is take care of the ball. Run it inside. Everyone cover it. Just, you know, get yourself some room and let your punter punt it out of there. But when you really got a QB you can trust, you might want to take a little shot early and try and create some space. And he'll get this only up to about the three-yard line. A gain of three, second down. three. Brings up second and seven. First carry for Raheem Mostert. Well, that gives him a little room, but not much. A gain of two to the five. Raheem Mostert, the ball carrier. Now, that's a mountain of a man that just made that stop, isn't it? But he's more than that. This guy is nimble and quick. More than a space eater, he just made a great play there. They'd like to avoid punting from their own end zone so they could use something here on third down. Garoppolo going to give to Mostert. And he will force his way forward for a yard or two, but I have a good feeling this will be coming back. So instead of giving them another third down, they'll decline it, brings up forward. Now that's smart football right there. You don't even have to really spend a lot of time considering it. Just know that you're probably going to get the ball back. 
Good job declining that penalty. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return. And the Dolphins will begin this drive in great field position, first and 10. Now, the Miami Dolphins, a week four loss to Seattle, but I'll tell you what, they hung tough against the Seattle Seahawks. If you're looking for moral victories, and Brian Flores probably doesn't want to hear that, but <laughs> Seahawks now 4-0, ultimately too tough in the end. But they, the Dolphins, they hung it the whole way with 17-15 midway through the fourth quarter. Russell Wilson, though, a couple of late touchdowns to polish off Miami. And Charles, what do you make right now of this Dolphins team at 1-3? and three? Exactly what you said about them. They hang tough. They play hard. They're well coached. They scrap like crazy. And if you give them an opening, they're good enough to beat you now. But you are exactly right about Coach Brian Flores. You know, he comes out of that New England, that Giants tree influence. There's always a popular statement around those crews. You know what they said? no medals for trying so he's not he's not taking any more victories at all he wants to start getting some wins so let's see if they can start doing that at san francisco at denver their next two weeks neither one of them will be easy but if there's an opening available the Dolphins team is good enough to take it well this crowd is not like that call understandable reaction from them that's their team that the penalty is going against and you and I both know they're going to take care of the quarterback and not a whole lot there he does get a couple taking it from the five down to the three the three yards to go on second down and they've got three tight ends out there jumbo set to throw Fitzpatrick and he will take it in for a Dolphins touchdown Mike Gesicki, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Dolphins are going to take a first quarter lead. You get down near the goal line, this is where having a sure-handed tight end becomes a luxury. And it pays off big time, especially when the defense sells out against the run. He finds himself open for an easy touchdown. Jason Sanders now for the extra point. And that makes it 7-0 Dolphins. So they only needed three plays on that drive. And it winds up in six points for the Dolphins. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And tackled at the 21-yard line, so a net negative there of four yards. At their own 21-yard line. For the San Francisco 49ers, 2-2 two and two on the year. They had road victories against both of the New York teams, weeks 2 and 3. But they come home and fall to the Eagles on Sunday night, 25-20. And Nick Mullins making his third start with Garoppolo out. And there were some folks whispering quarterback controversy in the Bay Area. Another strong performance could have really maybe heated things up, but Mullins was not particularly sharp. Through two ugly interceptions, CD, one of which was returned for a touchdown. So ultimately, Kyle Shanahan turned to C.J. Beathard. Yeah, in the fourth quarter of that one, and before Nick Mullins got rolling with the 49ers, a few seasons ago, C.J. Beathard played a good portion of the season. So they know what they have in him. Mullins had beat out Beathard for the number two spot. But Kyle Shanahan, the head coach, he had quelled all that talk before about his quarterback controversy. He said flat out before this ball game, this is Jimmy Garoppolo's team. Nick Mullins totally cemented that with his performance in this one. So when you look at it in total, it's a Niners team that dropped a game we didn't expect them to lose. They're home now for Miami week five and then home against the Rams. That's good. Well, 40, he's got this to the 30 before being taken down. A gain of 32 the time. and 10 now from the 30. Yeah. 
They run out of the shotgun with Mostert. And this time they were ready for him as they'll stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Two yards the loss, second and 12. This defense has really flown around in the first half. They've gotten to the ball carrier before they can really get started. Offense got to come up with something else in order to try and get his running game going. Behind the chain, second and 12. A shotgun snap for Garoppolo. The Dolphins get there this time, and they bring him down. Christian Wilkins. What a play by him. That's going to go as a loss of 13. Enough takes to start to have a good drive. Quite like a big loss on a sack, does it? No, now they're looking at a third and long, and suddenly the momentum shifted to the other side of the football. And old Mo is a very, very fickle man. That last sack, it puts Garoppolo and the 49ers in a tough spot. They face a third and long. From the gun, it's Garoppolo. He'll swing this out to Mostert. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. He did his best to just get four out of that, but not enough. And now fourth down. That's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath by all means. So now on comes the field goal unit, and wow, this is no ordinary try here. So this will be spotted on the midfield logo. It's a 58-yard attempt, and this kick is not going to be close. It's well short, well right to boot, and this score will stay right where it is. Matt Breed in the offense heading back out. A good job in the passing game. Decent job in the running game, but really they've been more effective uh, through the air. We'll see if that shifts at all as this goes on. Thus far, it feels like they're calling this game in reverse. Normally you run to set up the pass. Here it feels like they're passing, hoping to set up the run and be more effective later on in the game. Yeah, you can do it both ways. We usually talk about it in the reverse, however. No doubt about it. Here's a throw that's taken in out of the backfield. A good rally to the football keeps him only a yard in its second down. That's a good job there by the corner. We do talk about this a lot, that a lot of corners see their job as simply covering receivers. Tackling isn't everyone's thing. But in this case, he came up quickly and made a nice, short tackle. Over the middle complete. It's Ford. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. On first down, here's Breida. Not much there. Maybe a couple as he's taken down at the 40. The Dolphin ball carrier. He's tackled at the 40-yard line. Two yards on the pickup. It's second and eight. From the 40 now on second down, Fitzpatrick. He'll get this into the hands of Breida. Fitzpatrick's pass. That might feel like a little bit of a lost opportunity there for the offense because the defense brought pressure that time. And sometimes against that, you can get out to your running back, and it can turn into a big game downfield. But what a nice job they did getting to him quickly and holding him to a short game. Fourth down now as San Fran's defense was strong in coverage. Isaiah Ford in a lot of times it's that first read that you have. Maybe you get it in pre-snap and he locked in on his target, but he was covered quite well, and that one's incomplete. Here's Matt Hawk now as he's on to punt for Miami. The Niners take over first and ten at their own. San Francisco run. set to go on offense once more. The last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, 
do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, this time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. So some holding over on the left side of that O-line. And I know for the guys trying to move those big defensive people, they'd love for them to stay in one spot. But they move around so quick and so fast that sometimes you just have to grab them. Working from the gun, Garoppolo. And he goes down. It's a sack. They get him back at his own three-yard line. Well, if an offense is going to throw the ball on this part of the field, any pass rusher will tell you that's his favorite part. Gets a chance to get after the quarterback. It's almost like a reverse red zone. They can create points using their defense, and this time they take their man down. After the sack, oh, they're staring at a challenge basically from the other side of town. It's second and a country mile. And he's going to lose yardage back to his own one-yard line. Now the Dolphins going to burn the first of their timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. In his own end zone, it's Garoppolo. And that will be incomplete. The passing game not in sync here early. And now it's fourth down on third down so far in this first half. Relatively small sample size, but they're now 0 for 3. And the average in the league, somewhere around 40% on third down for offenses. So what's the answer to this? Either convert them or don't get the third down in the first place. Get your big chunks of yards on first and second down. Good coverage there holds them to just a two-yard return following up on the 44. And this offense will take over right at the midfield stripe with a first and 10. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. Good starting field position for them as they come up first and 10 right at the 50-yard line. A hit as he throws there incomplete. He was looking for his tight end, Mike Kosicki, but it'll be second down. It's second down and 10. It's Patrick now from the 50. Looking for his running back, and he's got it. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves them with third and nine looming. The Dolphins going to take their second timeout as they'll stop it with exactly a minute to go before halftime. They had the catch on second down, but it didn't help at all, and now they're looking at third down here. That one into the hands of Laird. And they stop him up short of the first down as they get him at about the 43. They do get seven out of that, but not enough to prevent a fourth down. Important so much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they've rallied and made the tackle. Here's Matt Hawk now, as he's on to punt for Miami. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And it's out of bounds. Now we'll see what the side judge says. He says out at the eight-yard line. So they'll play the field position game here as a very nice punt is going to pin them back. Yeah, it's almost like watching a game of tennis, or do you prefer ping pong, you know, back and forth like that? But it definitely was excellent, wasn't it? They're just going to run it here up the middle. He'll have a first down and more past the 20. And an anxious moment or two there, but they do get him down. 15 yards is the pick up there on the drive, starting very nicely. First down. halftime with a touchdown that's the difference on the scoreboard as we send you cross country to orlando jonathan coachman is there and has our ea sports halftime report all right brandon we'll get back to you guys in a bit but first let's take a look around the nfl here on this first sunday of october
We'll get started up at FedEx Field in our nation's capital, where it was the visiting Rams who come in and get the victory on the road. The final, 29 to 16. From there, we head up to Foxborough to check on the Patriots at home at Gillette Stadium. And they've got the lead over the visiting Denver Broncos. Demir Bird, a touchdown reception. Finally, we finish at MetLife Stadium to see what's going on with the Jets. And they were losers in that one to the visiting Arizona Cardinals. A touchdown, the difference, 21-14, the final score. Meanwhile, in our game, just the lone touchdown accounting for all the scoring. A tight one, 7-0 is the score. And for the call of the second half, we send it back to our broadcast team of Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Okay, Coach, appreciate it. A one-touchdown game here as we get set to resume play in the second half. Here's Dante Pettis on the return. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. The Niners take over first and 10 at their own 24 yard. Here comes a 49ers offensive unit as they'll have it first to begin this third quarter. They're close, close game, but they're going to need to do a little bit better probably here at half two, no? I would agree with that totally. I would guess it in the locker room. They talked about cleaning up some of the errors, but overall, I think they wanted to be positive with them. Guys, we're right there. Just not playing as well as we need to. Let's pick it up. And we still have a chance to win this game. Yeah, they do. We'll see if they can pick it up. And he'll get this one up to the 26. He was two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Brings certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front. Because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. Good work to pick up seven yards there. That gets him into a third and one situation. And one. Looking to throw, Garoppolo. And the Dolphins rush gets home. Down he goes. Emmanuel Agba that time able to drop him for a loss. Whenever you see a team deciding to throw the ball in third and one, as a defensive player, my mindset is we've got them now, and that's why they dialed up the blitz and got after them. But occasionally, you want to pass it on third and one. I mean, not a lot, for sure, but sometimes just to keep the defense guessing. Oh, no doubt. You want to break tendencies as you go along with the game because you don't want them to just say, oh, third and one, we know exactly what they're going to do. But in this situation, as an offensive lineman, as a running back, I want to know why I didn't get the football. It's a 46-yard punt, two on the return, and it'll be Dolphin football. So now the Dolphins set to take over on offense. They're on top here as they come up on a first and 10, trying to make amends for that lost week at the hands of Seattle from the 32 now. Here's first and 10. Play fake. It's Fitzpatrick. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far at second down. Well, hey, you know what I want to do? Let's take a look at some of the leaders right now around the National Football League because some impressive numbers. Although the Cowboys are struggling, Dak Prescott, almost 1,700 passing yards. He's on pace right now for better than 6,700. Russell Wilson, we don't know how well he's playing. 16 passing touchdowns. That's on a record pace. Rushing one. And down he goes. Fitzpatrick sacked. Eric Armstead, the defensive end, will get credited for the sack. Parker, we know they came out of the locker down on the scoreboard. That would guarantee you the defensive side of the ball got super emotional. They come out and play with aggressiveness, with fury, because they don't have to be quite as precise. And it paid off for them on that play, didn't it? Sure did. Excellent play. Really setting the tone for this third quarter. Here's Matt Hawk now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Fair catch called for and taken right near the 30-yard line. 
the Niners take over first down. And San Francisco gets set to go here. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone, you know, not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try to figure out what is working, and call more of that. Number 31, yeah, give him four yards eight, there. It'll be second and six. Brought down at the 35-yard line. A gain of four. Again, they'll run it with Moster. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play, and it's going to bring up a third down. No gain on the play. Now they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe they'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. First time they've looked his way in this game. He comes through picking up the first. Well, remember, they tried to give him the ball, let him run on the last play, but I think the light bulb went off in their play caller's mind, and this time they get it to him the more conventional way and it's much more successful as well. Three tight ends in the ball game here on first and 10. There's Garoppolo to throw. That's complete to the tight end Werner. Call that a gain of five as the clock ticks inside of two minutes to go now in the third. Second and five. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. A give. This is Wilson. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Nothing in that first half, nothing on the last drive, but they're moving now with a first and ten. They go back to the ground, this time Mostert. And he's going to get stopped up quickly. Give him a yard down to the 43. 43-yard line. One-yard gain. Brings up second and they'll stay on the ground with Mostert. And he'll be brought down at about the 42. Ball carrier. He's brought down at the 42-yard line. A one-yard pickup brings up third and eight. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we play three quarters. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. The Niners on third down. Just one for five to this point. This is third and eight. Garoppolo looks to throw. Open man is Taylor. He's got it. And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins' 29-yard line. And the Niners move the chains as Garoppolo hooks up with Taylor. Even though this offense doesn't have a single point to its name, they're not totally out of this game yet. A touchdown here, they could be in business. And how about that last play? Now they've got momentum going, so you know I'm a big advocate. Get back on the line of scrimmage. Throw another play out of while you've got them rocked on their heels. The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and 10. Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 13. And this return is going to be halted right around the 28-yard line. Bill Taylor scoring has really been at a premium. And, Charles, you got to tip your cap to this defense coming in here. They're offense, too, but this whole team coming in here on the road, getting a hard-fought win. I think the way that they're finishing this one up, an exclamation point on a terrific game. As you noted, hard for them to put points on the board, and they hold them down one more time and finalize things. Following the interception here, Fitzpatrick. And the Niners get there and bring it down. So much for setting the tone of the drive offensively. Giving up a big sack that loses that kind of yardage, not a great start. Well, they're in some hot water now after that sack. It's second and 21. 
Working out of the gun, Fitzpatrick. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. Fitzpatrick's pass. Give him eight on the play, and they'll be facing a third and 12. The Dolphins on third down. Not good, 0 for 4 thus far. This is third down and 12. From the shotgun, it's Fitzpatrick. Check down to Breida. Oh, now Breida loses it. And now this is scooped up by the 49ers. And he will bring this one back. It's a full return for the 49er touchdown. So they were down by a touchdown, probably just hoping the defense could hold them, maybe force the punt. Instead, they force the turnover and take it into the house. Well, the plan was perfect. That's exactly what they wanted. Instead, they got a lot more than that. Big time capitalization by taking the ball away and putting it in the end zone. Robbie Gold on for the extra point. And we are tied here in the fourth quarter. The scoop and score are always an exciting play in football, and we witnessed it there, grabbing it off the ground and then rumbling it into the end zone for six. This will all even at seven now as they kick it away. This will be fielded inside the five. And able to get this out to the 25. Dolphins take over first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. The defense of San Francisco marching back onto the field now. And they had the fumble return for a touchdown, and boom, they're right back out there again. And you hear so many people talk about opportunistic defenses in today's football. Well, they make their own breaks because they work at it all the time. We've been at the practices, the drills where they're trying to strip the football, the takeaways. They're always working on it, and it paid off for them on the last possession. Paid off. Now can they do it again? No, three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. But for Matt Breida, this is kind of an emotional game to be sure. He was signed as an undrafted free agent by these 49ers following the 2017 draft. And he had three good years for him. In fact, leading the Niners in rushing in 2018. Here's second and seven now from the 28. From the gun, Fitzpatrick. Yeah, a quick throw here. That's complete. And give him six yards here as he stopped near the 35 at the 34. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. Third down. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. Rebound on the tackle. A five-yard right there by Matt Breida, and he spent the early part of his career in San Francisco sharing the backfield and sharing the ball. What you really want with him, open space and make sure he's touching it because he can take it from zero to the end zone in a very short amount of time. We saw a number of good games earlier today. This one might top all of those. It's been a dandy as we come up on first and ten. Throwing Fitzpatrick. It's complete to Parker left side. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. That one good for 13 and a Dolphin first down. Nice snag by Devontae Parker. Wow, it took him five years in the league to have his first 1,000-yard season. He broke out in a big way. The former first-round pick had career highs across the board in 2019. In fact, his touchdown total for the year equaled his career total to date. Fitzpatrick on first down. And a scary incompletion almost picked off. It would have been their first INT of the game. Instead, second down. So the Dolphins have it as we welcome you back in. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. And this will move the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the 49ers 33. We'll give them 14 on that one and a first down. On first down, they run with Howard. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. He was brought down at the 28. From the 28, it's second and five. It's a game of five. Fitzpatrick to give to Breida. 
the 49ers now going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. They stay on the ground. Again, it's Breida. And he's got the first, but we also have a flag on the field. And they're already walking backwards. So he was holding from that left tackle position. Everyone tries to keep their hands inside when they're blocking ever since they liberalized the rules where you can extend them out. But sometimes they get out a little wide and they get detected grabbing some cloth. And they will rally and stop him short of the first down. They get him to the ground at the 26. So now one of the biggest kicks of the night is forthcoming. This for the lead in the final stages. The kick by Sanders is good. And the sideline celebrates as they have taken the lead in the final minute. All right, so time to reset here. It's a huge kick there. Gives them the lead, but they've got to be careful that their celebrations aren't a little too premature. You're exactly right about that because there still is time for the other guys to run a few plays and get into field goal position. So this defense is going to need to come up with one final stop if they're going to get out of here with a victory. Garoppolo and the Niners now. Down 10-7. A little under a minute to go. And they need, at minimum, three points out of this as they come up first and 10. Trying to shake off the interception, he'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. Samuel, incomplete. It's now second. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Back to throw, Garoppolo. And oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. Nick Needham picks it off. And he'll take this down inside the 15-yard line. They'll take over. When you talk about making winning plays, that is a winning play at this stage of the game to come up with that interception, huge. I like how you identified that because most people think winning plays are the offense trying to get it done. In this case, nursing a lead, they found a way to make a play on that side of the ball and maybe finish things off. Victory very likely now for the Dolphins as they take a knee here. Now the Niners going to signal for their third and final timeout as the clock stops here with 46 seconds left to play. And they'll indeed take a knee. Fitzpatrick on the keeper. It's a loss of a yard. And it's third down. The chance of wasting this great starting field position, a real threat. This is third and long. To an E goes Fitzpatrick, and that should just about do it. Well, they certainly didn't appear to be fired up about their options throwing the football, so to me, this seems like a case of just kind of taking their medicine there, run the ball, see if they can pick up something. Instead, they were thrown for a loss. Charles, the old saying, the old cliche, if you will, points at a premium. That certainly applied here, didn't it? And that almost like opened up a time capsule, didn't it? Old school football, low scoring, close game. What a way to finish it up. You loved it, didn't you? You I loved the defense. I certainly did. Brought back the images of the game of old. So for the Dolphins, they move a step closer to 500 as their record improves to 2-3. and three. And they'll get another road test next week as they head to Mile High to take on the Broncos. Meanwhile, for the Niners, they drop below 500 to 2-3 and three with a loss. And they'll have a chance at redemption next week at home against the Los Angeles Rams. So for our entire crew, alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.